The Mastercase H500M by Cooler Master sports dual 200mm addressable RGB fans, a USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C port, and four tempered glass side panels, both sides, top, and front, and the front can swap out for a mesh panel if you want maximum airflow. It has a plethora of cable routing covers to keep things tidy too, so click the sponsor link in the description to learn more. Excellent! So guys, I may have gotten a little overexcited about this Threadripper 2 launch, but hear me out. These new CPUs slot into an existing X399 motherboard. All it needs is a BIOS update. And I just finished putting this system together, the easily upgradable Riptide, which is also custom water cooled. And I have this system over here on my left, the Arctic Panther build with a 7960X, which is a 16 core 32 thread processor. Seemed like a good comparison to the Threadripper 2 2950X that AMD just sent over. And both of these systems have two way ASUS strict GTX 1080 Ti's and SLI, and everything is custom water-cooled. So why not set up a massive battle between Riptide and Arctic Panther? Well, there are a few reasons. So Threadripper 2 is AMD's 12 nanometer Zen Plus based follow-up to their first ever high-end desktop platform that they launched last year with the X399 chipset and TR4 socket. They promised a 32 core 64 thread processor on this platform with Threadripper 2 back at Computex and details have sort of trickled out over the past couple months. So here are the four actual CPUs that AMD is launching. The 32 core 2990WX available today, the 16 core 2950X that I am testing today that's going to be out on August 31st, and then the 12 and 24 core variants that we're expecting to launch in October. Ultimately though, things just did not go smoothly with my testing, and I mainly attribute that to my choice, to do benchmark comparisons on two custom water-cooled builds with 1080 Ti's and SLI. If you guys came here looking for some CPU performance comparisons, don't worry, I've got you covered there. But when it comes to gaming and overclocking, I'm just not comfortable sharing my full results just yet. That said, let's go over the hardware that I'll be using to test and compare today. So test setup number one is Riptide right here, and that is going to feature either the AMD Ryzen Threadripper 1950X, which is a 16 core 32 thread CPU launched last year, or the new Threadripper 2950X, the 16 core 32 thread CPU just launching today. It's got an ASUS X399 Zenith Extreme motherboard in there, running the latest UEFI version that ASUS provided, 0064. It's also fully custom liquid cooled with parts provided by Alpha Cool. It's got a 420 millimeter radiator in the top and push pull just for the CPU, but please note that the CPU block I'm using is not designed specifically for Threadripper, so I'm only expecting standard water cooling performance here. It's also got two ASUS Strix GTX 1080 OC cards running at their out-of-the-box manufacturer overclock. That's about 1975 megahertz boost on this system. Four by eight gigs of G-Skill Flare X DDR4 3200 memory and quad channel, and I did swap this in. Originally, I have a 128 gig Corsair Vengeance RGB kit in here, but fortunately, although it did take a little bit of finagling, I was able to remove those sticks and pop these in. This is simply to maintain memory equivalency between both systems. 32 gigs total and with the XMP settings it's running at 3200 speed with timings of 14, 14, 14, 34 and 1.35 volts. For storage, Windows 10 is loaded on the Corsair Neutron NX500 400 gig NVMe SSD and then the power supply is the Corsair AX1600i. If you'd like some more details on the hardware in the system, because it's actually a secondary system in the bottom too, it's in the Corsair 1000D, please check out my Riptide build log series. It's extensive and dramatic. I highly recommend it. The Skylake X system though, here on my left, is Arctic Panther of course, which has been through multiple iterations, but right now it's sporting a Core i9-7960X from Intel, 16 cores and 32 threads, so the same core and thread count on both systems. Asus ROG Strix X299-E gaming motherboard, and then storage in this system is Windows 10 on the Toshiba OCZ RD400 one terabyte NVMe SSD, Fractal Newton R3 1000 watt power supply, and four eight gig sticks of G-Skill Trident Z RGB DDR4 memory running at that same 3200 XMP setting. Then of course for graphics cards, two ASUS Strix GTX 1080 Ti's, once again water-cooled, once again overclocked. They're still using the out-of-the-box manufacturer overclock, but I found late in my testing, and this is part of the reason why my game testing is not complete, these two cards are actually running at 1962 megahertz, which is just a little bit slower than Riptide, but it was enough that there's a disparity if you look strictly at the GPU performance. The GPU driver though is the latest from NVIDIA 398.82 and I'm also running AMD's Ryzen Master software on the Threadripper system and Intel's Turbo Boost Max 3.0 on the Skylake X system. For comparison, I'm also gonna throw on my original Threadripper 1950X benchmarks from last year, updated 1950X benchmarks with the Riptide cooling, the 2950X in Riptide, and of course the 7960X in Arctic Panther.
So starting off with Cinebench, this is based on Maxon's Cinema 4D software, and it uses all of the cores and threads on the CPU to render a scene. So here we can see a bit of an uplift from last year's 1950X results to this year's 1950X results. The winner here is definitely the 2950X though, as it scored 3128. Interestingly, the 7960X came in just between the 1950X and the 2950X. Moving over to single thread mode, and this basically tells the story of AMD versus Intel right now. AMD is gonna win your multi-threaded benchmarks, Intel's gonna win your single threaded benchmarks as the 7960X here with a score of 188. Next up is CPU Mark, which is part of the Passmark benchmarking suite. Here again, we have multi-core mode where the 2950X wins again with a score of 26,661. The 7960X is still beating my 1950X scores, but it is good to see that Zen Plus is giving the 2950X a nice push. And then here in single thread mode, the 2950X manages to pull an upset and score 2286 over the 7960X's score of 2211. I believe this is the benefits of XFR coming into play, which will push a single or a couple threads up to a much higher frequency with the new Ryzen Threadripper processors. Next up we have Blender, which is a free open source 3D creation suite, and I have three different tests that I ran in Blender, the shortest of which is the Fishy Cat splash screen, and uh, this is time in seconds, so lower is better. The 2950X wins with a time of 24.6 seconds. Next is BMW 27, a more complex render, which takes a little bit more time. So here the 2950X came out on top again with 154 second total completion time, although the 7960X is right on its heels with a time of 158 seconds. And finally, the classroom render, which takes the most amount of time out of any of these. And here, the 2950X and 7960X are essentially in a dead heat with a time of 495, 496 seconds. Next is POV Ray 3.7, just using the built-in benchmark here. This is a software suite that uses the CPU to compute ray tracing in order to complete a render. And here the 2950X wins once again with a total time of 42.6 seconds. Here the 7960X struggled a bit and actually wasn't even able to beat the 1950X. And here are the results for Adobe Premiere Pro CC, actually Adobe Media Encoder rendering a six minute 4K video at H.264. And here the 2950X comes out on top once again with a total time of 669 seconds. Now let's switch over to some more game focused testing and we're starting out with 3D Mark Fire Strike Ultra. I have to point out here that the 1950X results I have are just with a single GTX 1080 Ti. So please bear that in mind. The 1950X in Riptide, 2950X and 7960X are using two way GTX 1080 Ti's and SLI. Ultimately though, the overall and graphics scores here are less important. What we really wanna look at is the physics score if we're specifically interested in CPU performance. And here the 7960X wins just barely with a score of 27,147. And then here is 3D Mark Time Spy, which is a DirectX 12 synthetic test in the 3D Mark suites. And again, here we can look at the CPU score if we wanna compare those numbers specifically. Everything is still really close here, although for some reason, in this test specifically, the 2950X started to tank and fall back a little bit. In fact, the high score here is from my old last year score for the 1950X. I don't have a very good explanation for this, but my guess would be that with the two 1080 Ti's and SLI, you're seeing more frames, which bogs down the CPU a little bit more, which results in a lower CPU score in this test specifically. And my final numbers here are for GTA 5, which are just a little bit off if you're looking at them directly, specifically that 7960X score. More on that in just a second, but I will say that the 2950X did have an impressive performance here with an overall FPS of 139, and this is playing at 1920 by 1080, which will put a little bit more strain on the CPU as opposed to the GPU. So at this point I would usually transition into some gaming benchmarks and I was starting with GTA 5 and I was doing stuff like turning game mode on for the 1950X and 2950X using the Ryzen Master software. Um, but I'm also benchmarking at 1920 by 1080 and that's simply to put more of a load on the CPU rather than the GPU. We're supposed to be testing CPU comparisons here by the way. And I should have just gone and rewatched my own two-way 1080 Ti video from last year and I would have remembered that GTA 5 doesn't really scale in SLI at 1080 at least. Uh, it does a little bit if you get up to 4K. But uh, then Arctic Panther started acting weird with choppiness and stuttering as you can maybe see in its low numbers and then I ran out of time basically I was jumping back and forth between both systems and trying to do a lot at the same time and doing troubleshooting and eventually I was like you know what I don't have time to complete a full summation of either of the things that I want to do so I kind of have to leave it at that I'm really sorry guys but at least I do have those CPU comparison numbers and I am planning on looping back around and spending some more time with the overclocking and everything so I can give you guys some additional comparisons 
Some quick temperature numbers though, the 2950X only got up to about 66 degrees Celsius. The 7960X was topping at 58 degrees Celsius. So I think uh, the monoblock clear out that I did in there was definitely helping. And clearly there is some overclocking headroom, so I should get to that. Overclocking attempts with Ryzen Master that I did try on the Threadripper 2 stuff were kind of hit and miss. It can be hard to get yourself additional performance with manual overclocking in Threadripper. I did manage a 4.15 gigahertz overclock across all cores and then ran CPU mark successfully so that improved my overall score, but the single thread score on that test suffered because at stock with XFR2, one or two cores will often run at 4.3 or 4.4 gigahertz on a 2950X, which would then perform better in tests that only use one or two threads, probably also would perform better with gaming. There is though a new overclocking method called Precision Boost Overdrive now that lets you set values for socket power, SOC voltage, and VRM current, and then runs higher frequencies within those parameters. Again, I saw some early success with this method, but overclocking is time consuming and lots of restarts involved and stuff, so I just really need to spend a few more evenings messing with these tools and come back with a follow-up video. If you guys are looking at raw CPU performance though, with Ryzen Threadripper 2 and the 2950X, AMD has clawed back some of the single thread performance gap from Intel by way of higher frequencies and the refined 12 nanometer manufacturing process. In this core for core matchup, the 2950X held its own and even traded some blows with the 7950X, but when you take price to performance into account, it becomes a complete blowout. $900 is the price that you pay for the 2950X. 9950X, whereas the 7960X retails for 1700 MSRP, but can currently be found for about 1450. Still, the 2950X is over $500 cheaper. I hope you guys enjoyed this video though, and my apologies once again for not diving into the gaming and overclocking subjects in more detail, but I will end by sending you guys on a raid. I know this isn't Twitch, but we're doing a Twitch that raid. Go over to Hardware Unboxed, because I know Steve did a ton of benchmarks for this launch, like he always does, and he has the 32 core 2990W X on hand, which I plan to steal from him very soon. Uh, hit the like button on the way out if you enjoyed this video though guys, and we'll see you all next time.